Arts and Crafts Stained Glass is a book about a subject that's never been written about in the uh, history of the arts and crafts movement. I became interested in it um, over 30 years ago and I organised exhibitions and researched many of the artists that I've written about. And over the years, people asked me, well, we need a book on this subject. And it enabled me to think more and more about the essence, not only of uh, the stained glass contribution to the arts and crafts movement, which I think is really, really quintessential to what the movement was about, but also about the whole experience of the arts and crafts movement for those people who promulgated it, who created the philosophy, and who lived by that philosophy during the last years of the 19th century and well into the 20th century. And being here in a contemporary stained glass workshop where those ideas still matter to artists who are working using the same materials and looking on that tradition not as something to copy but as something to inspire and give fresh ideas it shows I think the relevance of what I've written about as an historian and the way I've written about it I hope has been with that continuing relevance in mind. I hope that what I've written will enable people to not only appreciate and understand but really to enjoy what are fantastic works of art. Uh, works of art that are thrilling, deeply moving, and with all kinds of poetic, lyrical suggestions, and particularly in some of the work that commemorated the World War, work that can really tap into human emotions at the deepest level. The book illustrates quite a number of the most important works by uh, arts and crafts stained glass workers. It cannot possibly be a complete listing. That would take many, many volumes. But um, some of the most important ones are illustrated throughout the book in colour. And I've concentrated on details of those windows. And my hope is partly because the details in uh, an illustration in a book are the best way to show some of the technical points that I'm interested in discussing. But also, I hope, because they're a kind of invitation to people to go out and see the whole window, and not just the whole window, but the whole window in its context. And places such as Gloucester Cathedral, where Christopher Wall's great windows in the Lady Chapel can be seen, they are an experience and they're a total experience that is not just visual, it's imaginative, and even if you sit there in the Lady Chapel at Gloucester and think of another great work of art that was created there, which was Vaughan Williams's Thomas Tallis Fantasia, created in the very same period uh, when Wall was completing his work on the windows in the Lady Chapel. Uh, and if you can have that in your minds, I, as it were, then you can get something of the experience of the times when Wall was working.